Welcome to Come and See, your podcast for finding truth in a world of chaos. Brought to you by All for Jesus Living Waters Ministry. With host and founder, Richard Case, and co-host and retreat leader, Kathy Riccone. Join us every weekday at this time to discuss news, spend time in the Word, and receive answers to your personal questions about living life in God's truth. And now your host, Richard Case. Okay, well, Kathy, it's uh, great being back today. Uh, we've been talking about in the last couple uh, sessions about uh, this aspect of uh, abiding as we're trying to, you know, find the truth uh, in a world of chaos. Uh, and mm -hmm. there's certainly pl plenty of chaos. And uh, <laughs> as we've uh, introduced the concept of abiding, it's uh, Jesus's uh, John 15, 1 to 5, the explanation of the vine and the vineyard of Christ is the vine. Uh, he's providing all the life, supporting all the life. Uh, the father is the vine dresser, uh, the the gardener who takes care of everything. All the decisions are his. And he's got a plan for our life. He knows about the chaos. Uh, and he's saying, uh, and one thing he's trying to help us understand that's different as we approach this is our our perspective is God stop the chaos mm, um you're right <laughs> just just solve it all and here's here's by the way how i would like you to do it <laughs> <laughs> um and and god says well uh remember the world is under the control of the evil one uh and it's been that way since adam and eve uh and i have a kingdom that can function at the same time so you can live in both places in this wicked world that's full of chaos and by the way the the, uh, the nature of the enemy is kill steal and destroy it's called entropy mm -hmm. everything left alone is going to destruction so uh, the world isn't going to get in order uh, it's been that way if, we, if I could take you back Kathy and say you know tell me a uh, uh, a time in, in the history that you'd like to go visit uh, and we could actually transport back there we would see chaos. Mm -hmm. uh, we would Absolutely. see we would see entropy. We would see difficulty. We would actually, from our perspective, having know what we know, we would say, "Well, this is awful. Uh, mm -hmm. This is this is terrible." Um, and see, the church uh, and the life of God isn't to uh, transform the world completely and get rid of the of the chaos. He said because it doesn't function that way, and the only time that's going to happen is at the very end. Uh, mm -hmm. When Christ says, um, "When I come back, I'm going to set up a thousand-year reign, uh, and we'll we'll have a, we're going to have sessions periodically on the end times, so we'll be able to share some of that." But I'm going to I'm going to have a thousand-year reign where it's going to be pretty good, still still somewhat chaotic, by the way, because of the human nature of of man that's here, uh, mm -hmm. along with people uh, that were have already died or or raptured, will come back and actually rule with Christ, and then at the end of that thousand years. Uh, he says, I create a new heaven and a new earth. Then there's going to be no chaos. <laughs> then it's good. <laughs> uh, but until then, uh, every era of life has been full of chaos. And he says, don't be so surprised as what's happening to you, what's happening to the country, what's happening to the world uh, because of the work of the enemy, that it's going to get more chaotic. And uh, And don't look at it politically that the solution is return things back to a, mm. a nation or a government or a culture, but rather in the in the middle of the chaos, let me show you how I want to bring order because you can walk in my kingdom, which is superior to that to that world. And you walk in both places. So and Jesus right. said it in John 16, 33, he said in the world, you're going to have what? Trouble. Trouble. Uh, because you're walking in that kingdom. Mm -hmm. I can give you, he says, don't be at peace, be at joy, because I've overcome it. And so when you're walking mm -hmm. with me, abiding, I can give you order. I can give you, you know, beauty. And last time we talked a little bit about this concept of margin uh, and pruning. Uh, and a question, Kathy, I have for you today is, uh, as you've discussed this with, with people around you, um, what, what, is the chaos doing to contribute to this stress and this lack of margin and the weariness that people are having because of the chaos they're having to deal with? Yeah, 
personally, I'm seeing a lot of different things play in, you know, if you're just speaking of kind of the 2020 chaos that you know, <laughs> there, there's a lot of different chaos, but just the 2020 chaos in and of itself has really wreaked havoc on people's margin too, because, you know, we have technology working both for and against us, of course, but, um, you know, the different demands being on, you know, other moms that are working as well as in charge of remote learning and, um, you know, husbands, I was sharing with you the other day, how, um, just even with Dan, you know, where Dan is one, my husband, um, is one who usually has really good margins with, um, with work and keeps good boundaries in that. So that family time is truly family time, which we all appreciate in this crazy COVID season. It's been so much easier with him, um, working remotely at least a few days a week for that to bleed into family time now where it hasn't before. And there is more chaos going on and more things to navigate and more responsibility to deal with because things are so different. Right. Um, and so, yeah, I think it has, it has definitely created, um, a whole nother area to navigate in terms of margin, um, just because of the, the nature of what this last year has been. That's right. And, and it's been hard on families. It's been really hard on families. It's been hard on kids. You know, they don't even know how to navigate some of the chaos that's been created. You know, right. it doesn't stop just because you're an adult, you know, or not an adult, you know, the kids are feeling this, this sense of chaos for sure as well. Yeah. And particularly in the business part of it, um, uh, that, you know, as I work a lot with executives, uh, is that because of, of the COVID and because of all the things that are changing, uh, companies have reduced expenses mm -hmm. uh, and therefore put more burden on people's positions. Mm, that's so true. Uh, with a, you know, we need you to do more uh, right. in order for us to protect ourselves and to, to do things differently. Uh, or, or there's probably a lot of people that might even be out of work. Uh, no. that their jobs were shut down completely. Uh, if you're in the, uh, you know, restaurant business or in the travel business or the uh, hospitality business, uh, it's possible that you're not even working and you're relying on, you know, unemployment, which isn't covering mm -hmm. what, it, what it used to cover, which is a pressure and a stress. Uh, right. And how does that work? Um, so, you know, the chaos that we, that we tend to live in uh, with the constant changes and the constant uh, push uh, toward, you know, is it ever going to change creates a stress. And, and one thing mm -hmm. I've noticed, Kathy, in the uh, aspect of this uh, not having margin is that because of what's happened and because of they see the culture uh, declining, because of pressure their kids are facing, because of what we're facing mm -hmm. with, you know, I'm, I'm tired of being told I have to wear a mask. I'm tired. I right. can't, I can't right. go out. Uh, there's an underlying sense of anger. Yes. Uh, that I'm just I'm just angry that this could happen. It's still happening. Mm -hmm. The government is dictating everything to me, and and I'm and I'm not even worried about whether you're uh, one you know a conservative or liberal. It doesn't really matter. Mm -hmm. It's talking about the government per se is running my life, um, mm -hmm. and they're doing things that I don't like, and I'm tired of it. Uh, and so there's this underlying anger of just frustration. Right. That, and fear. And fear. I think fear is absolutely a huge part of it as well. Yeah. And and when you think of fear, what, what, what do you think people are thinking of there about fear? What what are they afraid of? There's so many different things going on. You know, right now, I think there's a primary, still a primary fear for their own health yeah. and for losing someone that they love. Yeah. Um, that fear of the unknown in terms of that, I think is very real. There's the fear of my job, fear of provision, fear of um, just all kinds of different things that are playing in, you know, fear of, am I hearing true facts? You know, when I consider the vaccine or not getting the vaccine, you know, am I getting real information? Am I getting real information about what's going on politically or all these different things that all plays into fear. And, you know, honestly, if you don't know, if you don't know Christ in the midst of this, I don't know how you navigate that. Right. It's, that's a, it's a scary place to be without him. That's right. So as we, uh, as we look at this and we understand it and appreciate it, uh, that the, the world of chaos, uh, that's around us, which is leading to, anger, disappointment, mm -hmm. um, frustration, and this aspect of fear. Oh, and marital tensions, Mar lots of marital yeah. tensions in the yeah. midst of this. 
Sure. Yeah, because yeah. people were used to being in in different environment uh, in terms right. of how they functioned, and now yes. they're they're thrown together with all kinds of pressure on top of it financially, mm -hmm. the space. Um, we have conflict per se, and now it's increased because mm -hmm. we're not getting along that well. Uh, yeah, a lot a lot of issues. Right. Uh, we're going to talk today uh, as we go deeper now into this concept of abiding, and the and the con the question uh, is really simple. Uh, in chaos, uh, and your life is str a struggle, which we appreciate, uh, the question is, well, is there an answer? Is there a way through this that could lead me back to uh, a life of what I would say would be a life of joy and peace and enjoyment uh, and confidence and security? Um, in the midst of the chaos in, in the midst. Well, that's the issue. It's not that it's replacing it. It's how do we live in that sweet spot while it's still going on all around us? Cause like you said, it, it has gone on for years and years and years. Right. Right. And so, um, as opposed to us getting actually more frustrated because our prayer is God stop the chaos. Mm-hmm. Uh, and he says, well, that's not how it works. Uh, you're in a wicked world that's chaotic and going to get more chaotic. Uh, don't be surprised by it, but take that question further. Okay, given that I'm in the chaos and given that things mm -hmm. have changed and I have frustration, I have fear, I have uh, stress, um, how can you lead me back to a sweet spot within it? And that's what we're going to talk about mm -hmm. today is... Uh, it's very possible, and that's what we want to encourage you with, is that there's answers to that, and uh, there is truth to that. So uh, let's go to uh, our scripture today uh, that we'll get into is uh, uh, John 10, uh, 3 to 5, and verse uh, 27. So uh, I've got it up on the screen there. So Kathy, if you want to read that to us, let's uh, let's go ahead and, and see what it says. Right. To him the gatekeeper opens, the sheep hear his voice, and he calls his own sheep by name and leads them out. When he has brought them out all his own, he goes before them, and the sheep follow him, for they know his voice. A stranger they will not follow, but they will flee from him, for they do not know the voice of strangers. And then do you want me to go ahead and read John yeah. 10, 27? Yeah, read 27 okay. too. Yep. Excellent. My sheep hear my voice, and I know them, and they follow me. Uh, okay. Um, and, and so, um, as you look at that, um, what does that fundamentally say about the relationship between the sheep and the shepherd? Well, one that he's speaking to us and two, that we have the ability to hear him. Yeah. Yeah. He says, uh, again, really simple way, uh, as he's describing in John 10 is this beautiful chapter of, uh, the picture of the shepherd to Jesus said, uh, as he said in John in various places, I'm the bread of life. I'm the mm. light of the world. Uh, here he's saying, I'm your shepherd. Um, and um, and I care about you. Uh, and Psalm 23 that we know, you know, the Lord is my shepherd. Mm -hmm. And all the beautiful things that he says about that uh, is his heart toward us, is I care mm. about you sheep. Uh, and I want to lead and guide you. And he makes this emphatic statement is, I know your name. Mm -hmm. uh, so I know who you are individually. So he's not talking about generic sheep. Right. He's saying, I know each one of you. Uh, and I know all about each one of you. And I have the, the life for each one of you. And he said, um, for you that have a heart to abide with me, he says, um, my sheep will and do hear my voice. Mm -hmm. um, and as you look at that simple thing, uh, uh, Kathy, of again, just a simple truth of my sheep hear my voice. Well, what does that mean to, to we believers that I can, what do you mean hear my voice? This is what's so, mm -hmm. so a little bit foreign to, to Christians because I don't think that's possible. Uh, mm. and, and the people that say that they do, eh, it seems that right. they're kind of, they're kind of out there somewhere and the stuff right. that they say, God says, just doesn't seem right. So what mm. do you mean hear my voice? What, what is that? What do you think it means to you? Yeah. Um, to me personally, 
I really see it, you know, that my sheep hear my voice, that we recognize his voice above all the noise. Um, and part of that comes from spending time with him, you know, just like, you know, my children, if when my children were little, if I was in a park and somebody screamed mom and it was Josh or Caleb or Anna, I knew immediately, I didn't have to look and wonder which mom it was they were calling. I knew my child's voice. But the reason I knew that voice is because I spend time with them time and time and time again. So I know their character. I know their nuances. I know the tone of their voice. And the same comes, you know, when I think about hearing God's voice, the reason I've learned to recognize it is because I spend time with him. And, you know, and it's learning to, you know, whatever he says will always align with his word. So if I'm hearing something that does not align with scripture, I know that's not him. You know, that, so that's an easy plum to judge something against. There's no way that he's telling me anything contrary to what his word is. Um, but it's just learning, you know, learning to listen to the Holy Spirit and, um, and spending time with him. And truly a lot of it is learning to, for me, to shut out the other noises, to yeah. shut out the other frequencies, because there's a lot of other stuff coming our way and we need to recognize what's him and pay attention to what we allow to, to ourselves to feed on. Right. You and, know? If, and if um, uh, the hearing, you know, in the, in the essence of is uh, he's speaking, uh, which means then we have the hearing. And in this verse, does he say that, well, only a few gifted sheep get to hear my voice? Ooh. No, it's all of them. It's everybody. He's speaking. It's whether we are paying attention and listening and able to discern it, yeah. you know, which, which I do think takes practice. To be fair, you know, I think that's something for me personally, I've had to practice, you know, I believe he's saying this and ask him for confirmation and then I'll act on it and, and then ask him, you know, okay, how, how'd I do, <laughs> you right. know, did, did I get this right? But, it, but it's okay to be in that, you know, people don't like to feel like they have to wrestle with God at all. They want it to just be this beautiful, whatever he invites the wrestling, the wrestling is growing. And sometimes the hearing and trying, and he knows our heart, you know? And so when we are, when we are all really wanting to hear from him, he's not sitting up there slamming something over your head going, oh, you totally got this wrong. He's saying, okay, now let's try this again. I'm going to try to speak it to you this way, because I know this is how you hear right. and how you learn. So let's try it this way this time and see if we, if we get it a little better. And as we do that, it's a dance. It's, it's a dance with God and he teaches us to hear him. It's, right. He teaches us to hear him. Right, right. Uh, because he's constantly speaking. And the key, and yeah. this is what the abiding is about, is well, I'm spending time with him and I'm getting to learn his voice because he said in this verse, um, my sheep do not listen to strangers. Mm. Uh, they don't respond to somebody that isn't me. Uh, cause that's one of the questions that, that comes up, uh, of, um, well, how do I know mm -hmm. that it's God or it's the enemy or it's myself? Right. Um, and it's just my own ideas. Mm -hmm. Uh, so how would I actually know that I'm going to hear God's voice? Uh, and he says, well, it's because you're spending time with me. Uh, and we're going to, mm -hmm. we're going to get into what that looks like in the word, particularly, as God starts to speak to you and guide you through his Holy Spirit, which is resident in you mm -hmm. in a very healthy way. Not a, not a strange way, not a, uh, you know, things that are against the word of God, but in line with the word of God mm -hmm. with uh, doing it. And as you talked about is um, the difference is um, those that hear his voice are the ones that are spending time with him because right. he, because he's always speaking. Um, and he says, my sheep, uh, because I'm the good shepherd and I'm going to give good things to you, I'm going to speak my positive life for you, um, will hear my voice. You're not going to pay attention to a stranger and you'll know the difference. Right. Uh, and that's, and that's the big question is, um, do you know the difference? Um, yeah. and the answer is a lot of times, well, I don't. And the reason is, well, because you're not spending time with them and you're yeah. not learning what that feels like and senses for you, which is unique to you, by the way. Right. Yeah. There's a great quote that I, um, that I like to share that talks about that 
actually reading God's word gives him vocabulary to speak to you. Right. That's good. You know, and the more, yeah, the more we read his word, the more, and even memorizing his word, the more vocabulary we're giving him to speak so that when I'm in that situation, suddenly he brings to mind what his word is on that situation. And when he's speaking, you know, when a verse comes to mind, I know that's him. So yeah. that's, you know, that's a, a no brainer when that's something right. comes to mind and that's his scripture. I'm like, yeah, that was him. And he was giving me that instruction. But if I hadn't have spent time in the word to begin with, there's not that knowledge base to pull it from. Right. So the, that's an important part of it. Uh, the, um, Question: One of the questions we actually got uh, already this week is, um, does God uh, just stop speaking to us? Um, mm. Do we go through those times of silence? Um, and let me set it up in two different ways. Uh, fundamentally, uh, no. Uh, there's never a time that he's not speaking. And the evidence we have for that is Christ's life himself. Um, he made a statement in John chapter 5, uh, and also in John 8, uh, 28, that um, I did nothing except what the Father told me to do, mm-hmm. what the Father spoke to me to do, and I did nothing. So I didn't function every day on my own. I only did what I was in conversation with, hearing God, the Father's voice. Um, so was there a time when Christ went through his three three years of ministry that he didn't hear God's voice. You know, no. Uh, It wasn't that, well, today I can't do anything because God isn't talking to me. The Father isn't talking to Mm -hmm. me. Uh, It's not that at all. And just, again, think of how you treat your children. Uh, If your children are in relationship with you, are you going to say, oh, today I'm not talking to you? Uh, No. Uh, The problem, if there's, uh, we're not hearing his voice, Uh, is on our side, not on his side. So there's not a time Mm -hmm. when he stops speaking uh, and he's always inviting us to follow him, uh, but there is a requirement. And the requirement is that I have a heart to hear it uh, Mm -hmm. and that uh, I'm willing to. He says, because uh, sin, uh, and this is Isaiah 59, uh, as well as uh, Romans 8, 5 to 8, Uh, can separate you, Galatians uh, 5, 1 to 4. You you can separate from the ability to hear, not that I'm not speaking to you, but that you can stop hearing me because of your sin. And sin, see, isn't things you do. It's the aspect of I'm doing it back in the flesh, what's called the flesh or the carnal. Mm. Um, I'm just on my own. And I've stopped listening to God And I've decided to go on my own. And he said, when that happens, you've walked away Mm -hmm. from my ability to to, uh, communicate to you. I'm I'm still speaking because I'm going to constantly say, come on back. Uh, uh, And then let me regain the opportunity to keep speaking to you. But uh, there's no necessity to what people say. Well, I go through a dry time and God is silent. No, Mm -hmm. no, he has something to say. Uh, he'll speak to you if you have a heart heart to hear it. Um, and it appears that I'm not hearing from him, but the problem isn't his. See, it's ours. Because right. we, we walked away in the flesh and said, I'm going to go decide on my own. Uh, right. And he said, well, then you're not, you're not going to be able to hear me. Cause, and, and think of it really simple. Uh, if you're going to talk to your kid, uh, and let's assume you're not using uh, the phone <laughs> or uh, or uh, Morse code or something. Um, where does that kid need to be? Close by. To he's got to be. He's got to be with you <laughs> yeah. uh, in order for him to hear you um, mm-hmm. and respond to you. And so, Jesus, and he said, "Look, I'm going to speak to you all the time, but I ne- <laughs> I need you <laughs> to be with me. <laughs> mm-hmm. uh, you got to be here." Uh, connected to the vine, abiding in the vine. You got to be connected. Now the flow of of me speaking, because I he said, my sheep will hear my voice. It's not when this happens, if mm-hmm. I decide to once in a while, it's all the time. The sheep are hearing the voice of the shepherd. And the key is you got to be where he is. Right. So let me, can I ask two questions to yep. go with that? Yeah. Um, so, how does that, so I'm just thinking of, of questions that 
may come up in this. How do you reconcile that with 400 years of silence between the Old Testament and the New Testament? Is that, am I remembering that right? <laughs> well, um, when you're talking about uh, silence, um, you're looking at uh, revelation. Uh, scripture, mm. scripture is, is what? That's God's revelation. It's God's, to us. it's God's revelation yeah. uh, to us. Uh, so, um, he, he, uh, at the end of, uh, around 400, you know, BC, um, because the time of Christ was coming, there was more, no more official, Mm -hmm. Revela revelation uh, given. Uh, in a sense, there was nothing more to reveal uh, mm. in terms of the okay. true truths of Scripture. And then, um, when was it? When was it started to be recorded? And, and I'll give you. So I'll be able to give you a great example of in between. So, who started writing down that revelation again? Um, the disciples. The disciples and Paul. Yeah. Okay. Oh, and Paul, yes. Okay, when? Uh, when? Um, after Jesus. Yeah, um. after, after uh, <laughs> actually it's about 30 years after Jesus. Yeah. Uh, so about anywhere from 20 to 30 years is when they said, okay, um, now God says, I'm going to have you again write down the revelation okay. that I need to give, give the world. Um, okay. Um, now, give you a great example. Um, Mary is a young lady. What happened to her? Her world got wrecked <laughs> in a good way, but yes. Yeah, because who, the, who? the angels came and spoke to her and told her that she was going to be carrying God's yeah. son, that she was going to yeah. be carrying Jesus. So, so there's there's these great stories of Mary who um, uh, was in between these periods of official revelation. Right. But was she mm. hearing God's voice? Yes. See, sure. Yeah. yeah. Uh, the You're right. The angels would speak to her. She had conversations. She pondered all these things in her heart. Right. Um, she would go to Elizabeth. Hey, go to Elizabeth uh, and spend some time with them who had their own revelation from God, mm -hmm. their own hearing from God. So, um, yeah, when, that's right. So all of that hearing was still going on. It was still going just on. not being recorded. Uh, and there were, there were people in the Jewish faith, uh, all along at that time that were hearing from God, were understanding God's will, mm -hmm. were understanding what God would have them do, uh, and how to proceed, uh, next, uh, so that as these events, uh, unfolded, uh, like, for example, in um, uh, the mid-century, uh, uh, the second mid-century, about 170 uh, B.C., uh, there's a guy that's called uh, 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 one of the kings there, and he, he did the abomination of desolation, mm -hmm. uh, where he stepped into the temple uh, and said, I, I am God. Uh, Antiochus Epiphanes is his name. Uh, mm -hmm. 173 Greek guy steps up and says, I am God. Uh, well, God gave the Jews uh, a way uh, of how to handle that and then how to be prepared for the next season of life, which they led to the Romans, of uh, how to cooperate with that and uh, in terms of the Greeks that were there and reject that he was God and that stay with God. And they had to have... Uh, insight they had to have revelation from them personally mm -hmm. was it was it written down as uh re written revelation no but they were right. still hearing hearing from god so right. that uh it's not about um you know was he silent for those he, he didn't abandon earth and he didn't abandon the jews mm -hmm. uh during that 400 years but he rather spoke to them with personal decisions that they had to make, even as a country, but it didn't become revelation because there wasn't anything new that he needed to reveal in terms of the very essence of truth, which is what the scriptures are. Right. It's it's truth. These are truth. These are living words 
you know, that, that I want to give you. Yeah. And so then my second question, thanks for clarifying that. That's, that's really good. I have, I, I, I was wanting to know that. Yeah. <laughs> um, so my second question would be for the person who is listening today, who is sitting there going, well, that's all fine and good. You can say there's not periods of silence, but I'm telling you, I'm living one right now. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. How yeah. would you, how would you encourage them to step back in? I know, I know I've heard you speak on this before, and I just think this is something that's important for people to hear because it is just this, what about now? Let's yeah. come back. So, yeah. so yeah, if you can just speak into that a little bit and encourage that person who feels far from God right now. Yeah, absolutely. Um, because, uh, and it's an interesting, uh, statement, question and issue. Um, are you experiencing silence? Yes. Sometimes that you feel it. Yes. yes. You feel that. at the moment, yeah. at the moment I'm, I'm nowhere. Um, I'm not getting any input from God. I'm not getting any direction from God. And I prayed, I prayed, I prayed. Uh, nothing's happening. And I got nothing. And I yeah. got nothing. <laughs> um, and and so it must, my conclusion, because of of what I believe God is, is, well, isn't he uh, going to answer my prayer when I'm crying out uh, to say, I, I'm not hearing you, I need wisdom, I need insight, and I've got nothing. Mm -hmm. um, and I am experiencing silence. And so then you attribute that to, I guess God isn't going to answer me. I guess mm -hmm. he doesn't care about me, and I'm, I'm, and I'm on my own. Mm -hmm. um, and then because you conclude, I guess I'm on my own, what do you do? go off and make your own decisions. Uh, and you right. actually walk further away from him. And um, and what God is saying and by is- by the way, yeah. let me just insert there for anybody who is sensing or feeling that right now, you're believing a lie of the enemy. Yeah. And so you need to capture a scriptural truth, post it on your wall, on an index card, wherever you need to put it, so that every time the enemy feeds you that lie, you have truth to combat it with. Right. Like, go ahead, I no. just wanted to insert that. Yeah. <laughs> And, uh, and, and, and there is a truth, see, about, again, the simplicity of the relationship is, well, if I'm going to speak to you, which I, I would like to and, and, and have a heart to do, God speaking, mm -hmm. I need you next to me. Mm. I need you with me in the kingdom. And the kingdom means that, that Jesus said, or God says, I'm the, the father says, I'm the vine dresser, I'm the king, and you have to surrender to yeah. that and and walk with me with a heart to hear what I have to say uh, mm -hmm. and and it kind of goes like this um, uh, I have I had a guy that I uh, dealt with he was uh, struggling uh, going having basically facing bankruptcy in his business um, and somebody had said hey you need to go talk to rich case uh, so he did and he said you know tell me you know who you are and you know and let me tell you what's going on with me and he described he said, I, I believed I heard God tell me to do this one thing, uh, actually to leave my company and go to a new uh, operation. I did, and I started this up, um, and basically um, I've run out of money, uh, we're not successful, and I borrowed a lot more money to support it, and I'm in big trouble. Mm -hmm. um, and I keep praying, 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 God save me, God save me, God save me. I got nothing. Uh, mm -hmm. and how, where is God? How come? Why haven't I heard God's voice? What's wrong? How come God is silent? Did the very, the very right. thing, the very thing you right. said. Uh, and I said, well, um, would you, uh, I understand. Uh, I said, would you like to learn that maybe what you understand about living with God and understanding God's way is different than you've been taught? Are you willing to learn that? Mm. Um, and he says, yeah, but um, that doesn't help me and hasn't helped me. And I don't see God being that good because he hasn't really helped me with this. Mm -hmm. I said, I know. I know. I said, I believe it's because you haven't learned what it means to walk with God. Because when mm -hmm. you learn to walk with God, he will speak to you and guide you and direct you and restore the very mess you got yourself into. Right. Okay. 
uh, he said, uh, I don't know, let me think about it. And I and my comment was really simple. Well, how's it working out for you so far? <laughs> um, would you, why don't you give it a try? Yeah. Uh, what do you have to lose what, at this point? What have you got to lose <laughs> that your belief, your understanding, your perspective mm -hmm. of living life with God is really off as evidenced by, by two things. You're struggling. You're experiencing mm -hmm. the struggle of life. And two is you believe God's silent. Mm -hmm. And I said, neither one of those need to be so. Uh, because God is never silent if you have a heart to go. So he says, okay, I'll think about it. He calls me back, says, okay, I'm willing. I'll give it a try. Uh, I'm not sure I believe anything you're saying at all, but I'll, I'll give it a try. So um, we start uh, getting into the word. We're teaching the very things we're teaching here on the on the uh, broadcast. And uh, he starts to get into it and starts to realize uh, certain things. And the first thing he had to deal with was um, he was mad at God. This is God's fault. God isn't. God isn't. How come? Where's God? How come he doesn't give me success? He told me to do this and now it's a failure. Uh, I don't get it. How come? How come? How come? And so we went into the word uh, and he abided in it and processed it. And he calls me up one day and he says, um, and now he's hearing from God, by the way, because uh, God's given him truth and he's given him insight and because he's learning to abide. Um, and see, that's the key, Kathy, is Mm -hmm. um, he just started to be with God and right. he immediately starts hearing his voice. And he wasn't totally recognizing that, but he started to realize, oh my gosh, I'm hearing God. But he comes to me and says this, um, uh-oh, it wasn't God, it was me. Mm. It was my fault. I operated in the flesh completely independent of God. I never asked him anything after the initial understanding that I'm supposed to go start this new company. And that's something I find we do a lot. I mean, myself, I have to check myself on that a lot. You know, I hear an instruction from God and then I hijack his plan. Got it, God. I know what you want me to do. And now I'm off and I'll come back to you once I finish right. instead of checking in with him each step because yeah. he is the master architect. Yeah. And he says, oh, he says, oh my gosh, uh, it wasn't God. It was me. Um, mm -hmm. I didn't even care about what God had to say. And I've made a lot of mistakes. I've made a lot mm -hmm. of, lot of big mistakes. Okay. Um, and then this is what happened to him. Um, he met, he went immediately to guilt. Mm. Is that it is my fault. I did all this. I've caused this whole mess because of my unwillingness to mm -hmm. walk and hear from God. Um, and then what he had to deal with is, uh, and I said, are you willing to forget the things that lay behind and press on to the high calling of Christ Jesus. So therefore now, Romans 8, 1 and 2, there is now con no condemnation in Christ right. Jesus. Um, and he said, he said, I don't think I can do that. He said, I've, mm -hmm. I've caused all this. Woe is me. Okay. I said, why don't we go abide in that? Let's go see what God would say about releasing you from that guilt so you could move forward. Mm -hmm. uh, so he uh, he started to work in the scriptures of abiding. Okay, what does God say about this? I've forgiven you. Forgive yourself. Let yourself off the hook. Move forward. Uh, and about it took him about two or three months. Um, and by the way, one thing we had done uh, uh, really up, up, up uh, at the very front was in order for you to survive, you have to get the even what's called break even cash flow. Mm -hmm. You got the the cash coming in has to support your expenses. So I helped him right away say, okay, let's readjust your expense load of the company and get to a break even because that's the only way you can survive it. And mm -hmm. he, he did that. So he was doing, okay, he was doing, you know, breaking even. He still had all the, owed all this money and had all kinds of problems. Uh, but uh, he, about a couple months, he's uh, working through uh, leaving, you know, forgiving himself and letting mm -hmm. himself off the hook. Uh, and he just, he just couldn't get there. He just kept saying, yeah, but look at what I did. Mm -hmm. Yeah, but look at yeah. what I did. Uh, and I and I kept helping him say, now remember, God's solution is now forward. Mm -hmm. uh, he needs your energy to focus on hearing His voice walking you forward into the solution, and you keep going backwards. Right. Look at what I did. Look at what right. I did. And He says, I've got to release you from that. 
uh, because God's energy is I need to free you up from that guilt because mm -hmm. life is now forward. And he says, I can restore all this because there is no condemnation. Forget the things that lay behind. I'll resolve it all. And by the way, resolve it all in our in our even our joint thought was it wasn't that his business even would necessarily succeed. It would God would restore him. So even if he had to file bankruptcy, well, that was part of the solution. We were OK with that. It wasn't that you say, OK, great, God's going to solve my business problem. Right. Eh, maybe not. But he'll restore you. Absolutely. Right. And I and kept God is much more concerned about that relationship. <laughs> yeah. And I and I told yeah. him, absolutely. Uh, God will restore you back to your beautiful, uh, sweet life mm -hmm. with financial freedom. Uh, now, I don't know how, but I absolutely can guarantee you, which is what I kept telling him. And he was mm -hmm. saying, you can guarantee that. I said, yes, because of who I know God to be and who I know Christ mm -hmm. to be. So um, he finally got to the point of uh, after abiding in the word, which is the only way to do it. He heard mm -hmm. God speak to him and he said, you know, and he called me up one day. He said, you know what? Um, I got there. Uh, mm -hmm. I, for, I, I forgave myself. Uh, I know God has already forgiven me and now I released it and I'm ready to go because I've released the guilt and I'm ready to go forward into what God would have me do. And, and there's some really great uh, pieces of the story, but his whole business gets restored and he gets restored through a series of miraculous stuff. As God said, okay, great. Now that you've got it settled, mm -hmm. it was your fault, not mine but you got to let yourself off the hook. Right. Now let's go. Right. Uh, and as he went forward and now it was paying attention to the hearing God's voice. So he went and he describes this. And the cool thing is now he's teaching others this, mm. uh, which is really, I the, love that. which is really the fun of it. But he remembers when he came to me and said, God is silent. Mm -hmm. I don't hear his voice. And I said, well, are you willing to learn a new way? And maybe it won't be that way if you're willing to follow that, which is what he ultimately did. And that's the cool thing about this yeah. whole process is all of God's sheep hear his voice. Right. And there is a requirement. Uh, you got to be with me. <laughs> right, right. You got to be next to me, God speaking, for me to speak to you. And if you choose to walk away, you're, you're, gonna, you're, gonna, you're going to experience me as silence. Right. But come with me and I will speak to you all, all the time. Yeah. And I love, you know, you talked about in that story, you really talk about him sitting in that condemnation for a little bit. Right. right. Um, and I think that's a common place for us to do. You know, when we do realize we've drifted and we've stepped out of what God wants, then we can sit in that condemnation. But I think it's so important that we remember you know, condemnation, like you said, from the Romans 8, 1, there is therefore now no condemnation for those who are in Christ Jesus. So it has no place. And the way that we know the difference, though, between condemnation and conviction from the Holy Spirit is condemnation will be accompanied by guilt. Right. But conviction from the Holy Spirit, a calling us back in, is always accompanied by hope. And the reason it always comes with hope is because he works both sides of the equation. It's the Hebrews 12, one and two. He is the author and finisher. So if God is highlighting something and inviting us into something new, and he said he's going to restore and redeem it, we can be hopeful in knowing that he will do exactly what he says he will do. Right. When we find ourselves sitting there beating ourselves up in guilt, again, we're believing a lie of the enemy. Right. Because... Hope comes with conviction from the Holy Spirit because it also comes with the promise that he will complete it. So we'll, uh, we'll pick this up uh, again next time as we talk uh, more in depth about um, how do you get into, particularly as you get into the word, to start, as you said, uh, Kathy, have him build your vocabulary mm -hmm. of uh, hearing what he has to speak to you. Uh, and it'll be personal. Uh, it'll be uh, more than just reading scripture, but it's experiencing the life of scripture nice. as he starts to show you. So we'll get into that uh, next time. And, and I did want to remind everybody, uh, which I'll throw up on the screen here, is that um, um, that we uh, encourage you to send in your questions, uh, make mm -hmm. comments on the YouTube. Uh, again, the more comments you make, uh, uh, the growth of this uh, broadcast actually expands to the point actually where we can even have our own channel, uh, which will be fun if, if you'd make those comments there. And, and uh, 
uh, write questions which we'll gather and then we'll uh, answer those uh, over time. We've already got several already uh, that we'll be picking up each each day now. And then uh, for you that are listening is you can email us at questions at afjministry.com, questions at afjministry.com. Uh, and uh, you can uh, send us any question you have, it doesn't matter, and we'll uh, work them in and, and start to answer them for you so that this becomes more of a personal relationship between mm -hmm. us and you. And it's not just hypothetical, but it's real because you have real honest questions, which is how we're going to mm -hmm. learn, learn truth. So we're excited about that. Absolutely. And again, if you guys found today's broadcast encouraging, answering your questions and just helping you to lead you back to the feet of God, um, be a friend and tell a friend. Yeah. Be sure to share the podcast with other people and let them know um, that this is a great place to come, literally to come and see and find truth in the world of chaos. Yep. So let me pray. Heavenly Father, we're just uh, excited about what you're showing us uh, even today that uh, your sheep hear your voice and it's all the time uh, and we can have that privilege of knowing you you know our name uh, we don't we're not going to pay attention to strangers because we're going to learn what your voice sounds like and and seems like with us uh, and we're excited to learn what that looks like because as we look at our life and even though we might be right day, today in a time of silence and wondering how come you're not talking to us you're saying come with me uh, and I will and so we appreciate that and love that in Christ's name amen Amen. Okay, Kathy, we'll see you tomorrow. All right, take care. Thank you for joining us for today's episode of Come and See, your podcast for truth in a world of chaos. Brought to you by All for Jesus Living Waters Ministry. Send us your questions and comments and tune in tomorrow for more answers to your personal questions about living life in God's truth. Remember, God's will is best and none better. His truth brings peace in this world of chaos.